These are the art history resource pages that I have available in the art students workbook. They tend to be towards the back of the book and start with an overall explanation of the uh, different schools of art from Renaissance through pop art. I have tutorials linked uh, on these pages that will take you through some videos to help your students understand these different schools of art. Then we have different kinds of research pages available. You don't have to use every one of them. Obviously, these are different ones you can select from. Maybe one semester you do one and another semester you do something different. So here they would pick a school of art from the previous page. Maybe your teacher will have you pick from a hat so that not everybody has the same thing. You would write it here using the internet or the library to answer these questions. Name three artists and the schools of art that they do and the year that they're born in. Many artists uh, start after they're 20 years old. If you add 20 years to their birth, um, this would be, is the answer to number one still correct? Do you need to change it? Uh, name three famous artworks or paintings, drawings, or sculptures by the artist. What must art from your school of art need in order to look like it is from that particular style? Then we have a posters exploration where students could work singletons or they could work in groups of up to four and create a poster that would help other students understand the different schools of art. And then we have a poster planning page in the student edition. This is a longer exploration. I call it interview with a dead artist. Um, so we have a bunch of dead artists listed here and by having students do an interview style uh, research paper, uh, I have less plagiarism happening because they have to rewrite everything in the first person. So I give this kind of fun scenario where the dead have come back to life, but they're not uh, blood eating zombies. They're just, you know, regular people, except they've been raised from the dead. And then I have 50 potential questions listed on the next couple of pages that could be answered by the students. I feel like, and I have my students do the first five and the last question is kind of mandatory and everything else is kind of up to them. I also tell students that they could play almost like the game of Jeopardy where they find an answer and then create a question and then put it in interview format. We have the layout expectations, about one inch margins, uh, single space, 12 point font, etc. And you can determine how many pages you want your students to do. In my high school session, I have students do two pages uh, of full interview for a C and three pages would get them the A. Um, by using Google, uh, we can have students do a, a plagiarism check, uh, which helps take that kind of out of the equation. Um, we even have a uh, interview introduction sample that students can use to kind of get on their way. Then uh, there's a rubric included here that will help you grade the project when it's all done. We have an art history story time assignment where students could find four major works of art and use those as illustrations for a story they would write. And we have little worksheets to help them with developing characters, a setting, a plot, and a resolution. This is very helpful if you are trying to incorporate literacy into your program, but then students do have to research about the artist and the artwork and incorporate that into um, their project. And then again, we have a rubric for this. As you explore the different schools of art, um, I have a video series that you can use. It is linked within the book uh, in the teacher's edition where students would look up the Renaissance, put in the dates, define it, what is special or unique about the Renaissance, and then naming two artists. And we go again, Renaissance through pop art, and then what style seems most interesting and what painting did you see that you seem to like the most. So this is a great place for them to do some reflection. Then I have a synopsis of the schools of art here and how to identify them as you see them. Again, video support pages are there. And while they watch the video, they can write three facts about each school of art. And then this is helpful for my 504 IEP students. So if their notes are incomplete, the information is also available here. Then we have five major pieces of art that I want every student to kind of know who did it, what it's about, that kind of thing. And we have a fun uh, art history flowchart. So you could put up a famous work of art and then answer the questions through the flowchart and end up with what school of art it is. So for example, if we were gonna do Les Demoiselles d'Avignon by Picasso, 
Is there a subject? Is there stuff you can recognize? Yes. Are the people wearing togas? No. Is there anything impossible or magical happening? No. Is there a strong sense of emotion in the art? Or do the colors and shapes and textures help make that stronger? Or does it have a very unusual use of color and shape? And that would be yes. Do you see obvious geometric shapes? Yes, and that leads you to cubism. So this is a fun way uh, for students to kind of learn about their school of art. And I actually do a game where I put teams of students, um, where I post a famous work of art, and then I have students use the flow chart to guess what school of art, and they earn points on that that are then added into their uh, final exam or on their research paper. Here we have some matching so that again, they can start to identify the different movements of art. And then we can have some uh, pages where we break down the work. So they would do a quick thumbnail. What school of art do you believe it's from? What three pieces of evidence do you have? And what was the real answer? And if you got it wrong, what did you miss? And then they would write that out there. So there's plenty of space for them to explore that. And then reflection and closure pages.